Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now the All Orders Index had a relatively flat week last week, but we expect that will change and for our market to break through the all-time high. Stay tuned as we'll talk about that shortly. For our main topic in tonight's show, we get into the stocks paying the highest dividend yields for a 10 to 20% return this year. First up, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax, tonight is jam-packed as we have lots of emails to answer. We'll also take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the stock market. Tonight we're excited to share our thoughts on some great stocks like Kogan, Dexas, ATC, the major world currencies and more, so get comfortable as we'll get into those soon. I'm Dale Gillam and I'm your host for tonight and joining me are two of a team of highly experienced analysts and professional traders Janine Cox and Philip Tortevsky and together we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening team, how are we? Fantastic, Good and I'm um, excited about reporting season at the moment, which has been interesting. It's a bit strange, isn't she? She gets excited about reporting <laughs> season. <laughs> yep, you just see stocks going this way. Why are you excited about reporting season? I'm excited to see just it to over. Just to see how it all, you know, pans out. It's okay. just always Phil's excited to see it over, so am I, but I'm with Phil. Anyway, tonight, as <laughs> mentioned, we get into the major currencies, but first we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. Phil, what do you got for us tonight? Yeah, so the hot stock tip tonight is Kogan.com Limited. So let's get straight into it. On your screen right now is the market index, and you'll see that Kogan.com is an online retailer selling in houses and third-party brand household and consumer electronic products. It also provides services for telecommunications, internet. Now, some metrics on this one. It's had a fantastic 2024 year to date, up 47%. Its one year performance is beating the sector and also the ASX 200, so performing very well. Market cap of 780 million. It is ranked outside the top 300, but not much. And it has a strong sell recommendation by the brokers. So, yep, surprising they got well, that one wrong. Well, that's a good recommendation, isn't it? Su surprising <laughs> that one's wrong. <laughs> but if we get into the chart, um, you can see I've got marked here on the weekly chart some um, some text, and uh, as you can see, last week or this week, it's uh, obviously Kogan's reported, and it's the the, sh the stock has shot up quite dramatically. It's reported a profit increase, and it's returning its dividend. It, it wasn't paying a dividend for a while. It's mm. brought it back in, and if we focus on the monthly chart, because that's where I've done most of my work now. You'll see what I really like about this stock, big picture. It's found support. We've got this level of support in November 2018. It's found that support in July 2022, a significant level. And the reason I say it's a significant level is because you can see what the stock did once it uh, took off from this level. And uh, finding support there again, I think is very, very important. We've got a downtrend line mark, which tells me that the long-term momentum of the stock has changed somewhere around December 2022. We've also got a nice little uptrend line, which the stock's really res respecting beautifully. And what I also really like here is you'll see that this stock is quite repetitive in its nature. And what, that's why I've got these rectangles uh, marked in green. You'll see that as the stock comes out of a significant low, it has a period where it starts to rise nice and slowly before it then provides this really nice green bar, strong bar that closes on a tie, only to then accelerate the trend and really exponentially move out. It's done it in the past in August 2017 also, trekking up slowly and then obviously having that big green bar and what do you know, here we are sitting at February, again repeating that same type of price action. So if history does repeat, there's there's huge potential upside here. Janine, what do you think? Well, look, I think it looks good too. What sort of range is the current bar compared to those bars that you've got in the rectangle? Is it same sort of percentages or is it um, we're getting a bigger one right, bigger move up right now? We can have a look. Yeah, we can definitely I mean, that's interesting to see. 47.5% there in 2020 and then uh, 4295 and down there. It doesn't look, but yeah, 50, so 50 odd percent. So similar sort of move and so not the, not every time has it done you know accelerated after that to the same rate so in 2020 of course it, it um, accelerated at roughly the same rate it appears the following month 
But mm. if you go back to where you're looking down in 2017, yeah. the following two months, um, it was a little bit lacklustre before it sort of went sideways. So, But what you're expecting is that it's going to do the same sort of thing as 2017 or more like 2020? Yeah, I, I think more than anything, it's just the stock now that because it is repeating this price action, it's something to definitely mm. take note of. And the fact that there is a story behind it, there's a catalyst now, it's returning the dividend. It's w well and truly beat expectations and the market's yeah. been really I'm happy. I'm excited about, about it because, mm. I mean, this is a great little Australian story, isn't it, Kogan? So go Kogan, I say, and, and look at Amazon. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> and um, don't listen to brokers is pretty much what you're telling me. <laughs> it's like go for Kogan and disregard what the brokers are saying. So thanks, Phil. Well, that is it for our weekly hot stock tip. Now, shortly, we're going to get into our topic for the night. But before we do, remember to text your question to the number on your screen. Now, while you do that tonight, we'll give you our thoughts on major currencies. So let's get into those. On your screen right now is a watch list of major currencies. Let's have a look at that. All right, now at the top of the board there, we've got the British pound versus the US dollar. It's almost line ball, Phil. Um, so this is the one that we're gonna talk about tonight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fallen the least. Um, it's up there at the top. And you know, what I find interesting is that pretty much every currency, most major currency is down against yeah, well, the US I'm, dollar. I'm interested in watching the Japanese yen versus the US dollar. That's down the, the most at 6% with everything that's been going on with First, Buffett, we looked at that previously in one of our shows yep. and how Buffett was buying into it. And there's just so much talk about that at the moment. So, yeah, a good one to keep an eye on. But is there anything that you suggest that people follow? This Is it the British pound they should be looking at or something else? I think given here in Australia, we should always watch the dollar. And, and I'll put that up on there as, a, as an option if we can get into it a little later on. But for me, the British pound, because it is a, such a, a major currency, um, it's always one that's very important to uh, to have a look at. And look, uh, how about we bring up the chart? Great idea. Y yeah, so, and, and the reason this one caught my mind is because you can see we've marked in a blue line here basically where the price of the, the pound versus the dollar has been throughout its history generally. And we know with these markets that, um, you know, they're not necessarily growth type markets. They're markets that uh, every country wants a stable currency, they don't want a currency mm. fluctuating ridiculously. Um, but with the pound in particular, if we go back to the chart on, on, on what you're seeing here, you'll see that since 1985, it's been the lowest price ever in August 2022. So it broke the all-time low. Very, very wow. interesting stuff, yes. And um, obviously it's had a bit of a reaction out of there. So uh, we've also marked a, a downtrend line there in grey. So uh, to me, what that's telling me is uh, that the pound is pretty much at the extreme that, it's, that it ever has been versus the dollar. So when things happen like this, it's very important to have a look. And, and Well, it could just sort of go sideways under that, the angle of that line for a little while, couldn't it? But if it broke, what you're saying is if it broke above the line, then you think it's, it's on its way and at least to challenge these highs here back in 2000, 2021. Yeah, definitely. And I think historically, it's, it's going to go back to a dollar sixty at some point. So um, given where it is now, it's quite out of the ordinary for the longest history of this uh, of this particular currency. So one definitely to watch out for because there could be some really good opportunities. OK, so not so good opportunities if um, we're looking at that in terms of, you know, wanting to go to, to England. But for um, for the English people, if you've got money in Br British pound, then you're going to be doing well, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and for the traders as well, you know, mm -hmm. the, all the currency Can traders. Can I ask a question? Sure. And I'll, and I'll pose this. Is it because the, the US dollar is so weak and the pound so stable? That's or what is we it think. the opposite way? What's mm. happening? Well, the pound's weak and the US mm. dollar's str uh, been stronger, which is meaning that the pound's been falling versus mm. the US dollar. But now we're seeing that reverse that the pound's starting to rise up. So it, it's the pound getting stronger versus the US dollar, meaning the US dollar's getting weak. Mm. And we had that good conversation about what we think of mm. the US dollar in the future. And then we, you know, we went uh, extra and started talking about empires rising and falling and reserve currencies and all that kind of stuff. Is that so what you did all day? Instead of working, <laughs> you were just chatting about that. Conspiracy <laughs> theories. Yeah. But it is, it's, it's, it's a very valid, even the US knows that their currency is devaluing and that's mm -hmm. what they're very scared of. And I'm reading lots of reports from the US about their currency stopping being the world currency anymore and et cetera. And we're seeing a shift right away from all of that. So that's one reason for this. So that would all go that the British pound will obviously start taking off against the US dollar. For sure. A yep. lot more, a lot more. Well, that is our thoughts on world currencies. Now, before we get into the first email, remember to get your questions answered live on air, you will need to text into the show right now. Our phone system is down, so please text 
um, into the show and the numbers on your screen. Now, you can also send your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au and we'll answer them in next week's show. Now, let's get into our first question. Our first email is from William who says, Hi Wealth Within Team. What are your thoughts on BetaShares Asia Technology Tigers ETF? Um, it looks like it may be a good buy for me if it rises above $8. Thanks, Will. What do you reckon? Do we want to be buying an ETF is my first question. <laughs> <laughs> don't even look at hey, the chart yet. Let's just decide. <laughs> Will's asking for your opinion. Yes, Will. We'll on help you this out. this Asia one. So just be nice <laughs> All right. and then tell him what you think. It looks hot. It looks hot. It looks incredible. Okay. Yeah, looking at the chart, it's just broken through this level. I'd like to say that it was falling away, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. And we know there's a lot happening um, with the technology stocks, but it, I thought it was surprising to me that I didn't see this shooting up as strongly. When I, when I went to have a look at it, I thought it was going to be in a nice, strong uptrend, but yeah. not the case. We can see that it's just been going sideways for a long time, but it's just sort of trying to push through this $8 mark that he's talking about. So really great that you've got this level mark there. It's very important. But I'd say that, you know, I'd be wanting it to close above this high, given it's just struggled for so long. So that's a high of 805. Mm -hmm. You got any other comments or? Yeah, look, I'll give him, I'll give him two scenarios. Um, yeah. I don't think it's that fantastic, to be honest. Um, it, it, to me, it's a, it's a bit lacklustre in terms of how it's trying to push higher. I like the fact that it is, you know, consolidating because it could very well break out and, and you know, go for a nice run. But if, he, if we just focus our attention to February 22 and March 22, we can see that that's where the real big selling came in. Um, and now it's approaching those levels. So this could very well be what, like, you know, technically we, look, we like to call those rising flags where you, you, the stock struggles and tries yeah, hard yep. to get up and then shoots out. And to add to that, on the weekly chart, we've got, if we bring up the chart again, on the weekly chart, we've got volume falling as on this last run. So I'm not super confident, but I can see the, the upside as well. So, so it probably doesn't answer his question, but... No, well, you did. I mean, obviously you had the question, why buy the ETF? Mm. Now, obviously... We, I don't like index ETFs, but I mean, this is an Asia fund. Mm. Mm. So, that's, so mm. that's obviously it would be a fund or an ETF to invest in various different Asian markets. Now, some Asian markets are much better than others. Technology, mm. um, this one is. Um, it's a technology fund in yes. Asia, sorry. Yep. And Asia tech is really booming. I know we've done interviews mm. with people um, in Singapore, Chris Tran talked about mm. Asia Tech for Talking Wealth. So if people are a member of Talking Wealth, they can actually watch that. Yeah, that's Because Asia is doing really good things oh, yeah. in tech. I'd rather line up the mm -hmm. individual shares and just have a look, see if there's anything that sort of is closely fitting the ETF. If, if you think the ETF well, is going to go off. driving it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I just want to find out what's underneath that. And you mm -hmm. can probably do a search on the website and have a look at the fact sheet and find out what are the major holdings in there. Yep. And then go to those stocks and then pick something. Thing, you know, but if you've got good strategies and good rules, then there's no reason why you can't mm. do that. It's but why, really good way of doing why it. go to this type of ETF if it's just putting another position into your portfolio? Mm. Then there's plenty of great stocks here in Australia to get into exactly. right now that mm. would perform better than this. Oh, yeah. That's sort of what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. But if there's a, an actual reason to be in an, 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 an ETF, in technology in Asia because there's some research he's done that says, oh, we think tech's going to explode. Well, mm. that's maybe a different idea, but why is the reason to buying an ETF for that? Because you're saying, we'll just find the company. Exactly. And do it that way. So whichever way. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, it's, it's just possible that it, because it is listed on the, a, on the ASX, it's an easier option for him to get in, into hmm. the Asian exposure rather than go and try and buy it. I don't have a problem with that. Company. I don't yeah. have a problem with you getting exposure to a specific area on an ETF. Right? Yeah. As I said, I just hate index funds, of course. index ETFs. But Asia Tech is interesting to me. And that's what I'd... The, he didn't say enough on his email mm. to me. And if he says, here's my research into this, I'm thinking of buying this one. If he just wants a position for his portfolio, just buy a stock in Australia because it's just easy. Exactly. Mm. And you'll get better returns than this ETF. That's really what I'm saying. Okay. So, yeah. But up, up till now, it's like, you know, I'm with you guys. Mm. I really am with you guys. Fantastic. Anyway, well, now we have an email from Anne-Marie who says, Hi, I've been reading Dale's book. And my question is, is there a rule when to buy more shares once you hold five stocks? Being a small investor, for example, at the end of the week or on the Monday, do you put a marketplace order in like uh, you're buying the stock? Looking at my placed order, for example, Wes, I see that I have 18 held in my stocks. Do I add X amount in the quantity and follow the instructions, limit price, etc.? 
and do I need to put another stop loss on the buy or would that take into account the stop loss previously? Um, if you'd be able to help me out on this question, Anne-Marie. I think it's a really good question that she's only a small investor. Mm. So she's got from, we cut a lot out of that email because it was yeah. like three times longer. So yeah. she's a smaller investor. She's got five stocks. And in my book, I say, you know, start out putting $1,000 in each get, stock. To when build you get up. to five, then get what, another one until you get to six and yeah, keep so building. So what does she do? Is she better mm. to add to those, to those positions in those five stocks or to get a six position, a seven Depends how eight. much money she's got in each individual one. Hmm. I mean, if she only had a very small amount of money, I'd want to build up those a little bit first. Well, that's what she's asking because hmm. she doesn't She doesn't have a lot in each one. She's saying, you know, I've got 18 West Farmer shares. Hmm. Do I add more to that? Mm -hmm. You know, and then how do I do that? Do I just set my order on the broking platform at a buy at limit or, hmm. or do I add a certain percentage or do I add... What do I do? That's what she's yeah. asking. I mean, the most important thing is how much money have you got? That's the first question, I think, Anne-Marie. Mm. Once you know how much money you've got and how much money you want to invest overall at this stage, because you can only work on what you've got now, mm. then I would actually decide, well, okay, am I going to add to one or two stocks? Because she may not have enough money to add to all of them. No, I'd just it be, adding, be select. adding to one stock at mm. a time. Because yeah. unless, you know, unless she's got a bit of a windfall and she's got five or ten grand and she go, okay, now I can add to that, what do I do? But mm. let's, And because she doesn't, she never documented in the email that, she, oh, I've got another thousand, mm. what do I do with that? So that's really the question. Yeah, because is, you don't want to be adding really small parcels of shares to get an extra, an extra share. You want to be building up those shares if you've got some really good ones. Well, my thinking at the moment for Anne-Marie is, it, let's say, for example, she's got another $1,000 that she wants to put into the market. She's got five mm. stocks already. I think I'd add a sixth. Mm. Mm. I, I think I'd do that first rather than trying to add to small positions. Mm -hmm. Because if she's using rules, like she's just graduated from our course, from our diploma course, and if she, she'll find that over a period of the next six months or so, she's probably going to start selling some of those five that she already got. Yep. Because they'll give us some sell rules, possibly into the pullback into April. Mm. So I'm thinking that will clean up, put up more cash into a pile to take bigger position sizing next time. But if you mm. add small amounts, then you don't feel it. So it depends on yeah. how much you want to add to each one. So you, you don't know notice it mm. but you don't want multiple positions in the same stock so this will if she's adding mm. to the one she's got she's going to be getting another position now a mm. stop loss fill what does she do with it well uh, to me it all comes down to like you just said before whether mm. she is looking at a chart and whether she has any strategy around mm. this stuff i mean if she's just buying um adding to her long-term investment then the stop loss having depending on if she's buying it at a lower price or a higher price it's going to you know affect what she does if it's at a higher price i'd leave the initial stop as it is. Yep. If it's at a lower price, then perhaps she can, you know, find a new stop. Um, but more importantly for me, it's uh, look at the ch look at the charts of all the five options you've got, um, and even expand your window, like you said, to get a sixth, uh, and find a stock that looks good. Mm. Because I mean, you know, you've got the ability to have a look at a chart, and and finding a stock that 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 looks the nicest, you're putting your money on the line, so you might as well do a little bit of work. Yeah, mm. and I don't be putting money into a stock if it's going up. Mm. Wouldn't be adding if one of them, any of those five are going down, I wouldn't be putting more money That's into it. That's a good it. point, yeah. I'd just be making yeah. sure they're going up before I add to it. But we do have a text, um, and this one is from Zach, I believe, and he's asking about Fisher & Paykel Healthcare, FPH. He says, hi team, I would love your opinion on FPH, thinking of entering on a weekly signal. So let's have a look at that one, what do you reckon? Love it. Me too, really like is it. Is that it? Just the, <laughs> just the fact that it's just trended up so nicely from that low, it's just recovered beautifully. That was a nice reversal. But you know, more importantly, if we come back to the bigger picture on it, it's really making a recovery. It's, it's come back down here. There's no more sellers in there. We've got this really strong rise, which is just confirmation of that low, and then a break through that high. It's a classic you know, trading mentor um, opportunity, isn't it? If they, if, are they doing any courses? Um, is who's, the, who's doing any courses? Zach. Zach, is he studying with us? Oh, that would be well, nice to know. You read the, you read I the didn't text. See it. Sorry, <laughs> Zach. Well, well, what planet are you on? Come I on. didn't even look. Like, once I heard the stock, I thought, oh, good. Let's get no, this no, one no, up. No, no, no. He fantastic. says he's looking. He's wanting our opinion on it. So yeah. mm -hmm. maybe he's done our course. Maybe he hasn't. I don't know. Mm. Well, if he has, he's got the right idea. Maybe. Yeah, he should. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he mentioned some weekly signals on the stock um, to buy. So... Uh, he probably has done our course because there are a few that that, that um, are present there. Uh, for me, this stock, like Janine said, it's, it's had a really nice low that it's made in October 2022. Had a strong run. The pullback's nice. It hasn't taken out the 22 low. And now the stock's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. In the, in the bigger picture also, it's had that really nice pullback from the all-time high. 
So to me, it, it's done all the, the retracements it needs so it can you know continue on higher. So it's very healthy at the moment. Mm. Um, if it can get through the 28th of April 2023 high, then uh, I would say to him that, look, definitely this is in a more of a medium term uptrend and you should be targeting these highs up near the all time high. Yeah, I know. Phil and I looked at healthcare yesterday for the market report that we do for TalkingWealth.com and there were some really Rippers. interesting stocks in there, but we didn't actually specifically look at Fish and Paykel, did we? No. We looked no. at a couple of others. That so were you just want to say thank you, Zach, for bringing up <laughs> Fish so and Paykel. I think we're going to go and have a look at that again <laughs> a bit more later on, but we did have a look at it for the Talking Wealth mm. um, members for our market wrap yesterday. So we picked up a couple of nice little healthcare stocks, didn't oh, we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know ResMed was one of them. And there yeah. was a couple of others. But I'm not going to tell you anymore. You have to go and watch the video <laughs> anyway. Now, we know you all love a good dividend. And so tonight's topic is all about finding the stock still paying the highest dividend yields and those with the highest potential total return. Now, that means we'll explore lots of great stocks and give you our view on the best buying opportunities. Now, before we get into the stocks, we reveal three important facts about dividends you must know. And we'll also share why it's not wise to be looking in the review mirror. Now we all like getting money put into our bank account, especially if we don't have to do anything to get it. Well, that's exactly what happens when you get a dividend. The companies give you invest in, do the hard work, and you get a share of the profits twice yearly. Easy money, really. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit more greedy, so I want to get paid more often than that. So how do you do that? Keep watching as we'll share with you a little later on that one. First, let's get into the three important facts. The first one is from an article I wrote. Now in the article, I share that a good investment must have capital growth, meaning your investments increase in value and income from dividends. So I wanna get your thoughts on that guys, because if anybody's read my book, they'll know what it is. Okay, is this the point where I'm just supposed to agree with you? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's the, the golden combo. It's yeah. the perfect combo, getting income while your stock's providing you with fantastic growth. And it does exist. Yeah. Um, it does exist. Um, not as often as the scenarios where stocks with huge dividends, a lot of the time the growth is sacrificed. But um, it's, it's the ideal scenario if you can. Now, one thing that's challenging mm. for people is that when they're getting um, stocks for dividend and, and capital growth, Sometimes they get distracted by the short-term gain of a dividend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so they're thinking, okay, I've got into this for income and, and growth, but they forget to go back to their strategy and review, why did I buy this stock? And mm. so they're hanging on for dividends when it should be a more balanced view of what's going on. Yeah, my, my, my whole comment is mm. about always go for capital gains first. Mm. And then you need to also get income. So if you're buying investments, investment property, capital gains mm. and income. So go for the best gaining property. Same with stocks. Go for the best gaining stocks and then add the dividend on top of that. Don't go for the rental yield on a property and don't go for the dividend yield on the on a stock. Go for gains first and then go for the, that dividend yield. So, but next, or well, the next point is never assume that the dividends will remain high. And I know this is an issue we see with a lot of people. Now we know they don't, so let's look at, at the expectations for dividends moving forward. Now Janine, you found an article on this one recently, didn't you? Yes, yeah, super sleuth. This article was in the Australian Financial Review last year and it revealed that the average dividend was likely to fall to 4.1%, which by the way is actually the long-term average. Well, it is, okay. So this brings me to our third point. Now, earlier I said that it's not wise to be looking in the review mirror chasing large dividends. Now, that's what this article tells us. Never chase dividends. Now, Phil, you've got some thoughts around that. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, given now that the peak dividend, like this article is saying, has, has passed us, just chasing dividends is going to be a dangerous strategy. Um, so I would definitely be looking for that uh, the growth stocks first. And if you can get a nice dividend on top, then great. But so it's so common for newer or more experienced people in the market to chase dividends first, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it's, it's just a real shame that they do that. They go, oh, this is paying 6%. But that could be the sign the stock's falling away. And where are they getting this information? They're reading it on chat forums or are they looking at some advisors suggesting to go uh, for big dividend anything, stocks? Brokers, That's what whatever happens, else, doesn't it? All of those sorts of things. Mm. But really, we shouldn't be doing that. Now, I do have one additional point before we get into the stocks, and that is, why it's important to know the ex-dividend date. What do you reckon, Janine? Well, look, um, 
first of all, long or short in the market. So you've got to be mm. thinking about that. If you happen to be short in the market, which some people do, then you could get caught um, really in an awkward position because if you're holding the stock through the ex-dividend date, then you're going to have to pay the dividend, which mm. is a funny concept for some people if you haven't heard of it that way. Um, if you're long in the market, then clearly you want to be in for that dividend, but you just want to make sure. So, you know, you might be watching a stock and then all of a sudden you, you haven't looked to see if it's going ex-dividend mm. and either you miss out on the dividend when it could have been a good opportunity or you buy in for the dividend and the stock plummets um, during that ex-dividend period. Well, it mm. can do that. Now, I know at the moment we've had a period of the last few years where dividends have been higher because companies are wanting people to stay with the stock. Mm -hmm. So they're like BHPs and those have had high dividends. Miners yields. have been key. So we're past the peak, haven't we, on dividends? I think yep. there's a lot of companies, I mean, Kogan's bringing them back, like you mentioned before, but a lot of companies, I think we'd be seeing a lot more dividend downgrades, wouldn't we? I think so. And FMG's tried to defy that mm -hmm. um, process and sort of stood out as a result of that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of companies, I think, over time will do that. There'll be a catch-up process and they'll be looking to invest that capital. Because the more dividends you get, even though we think, oh, we would like to have more dividends, the more dividends we get, the company's not putting that money back into growing the share, the value yeah. of the shares. So yeah. where's it going to go? Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's less money for them to expand their company. Mm. This yeah. is why I love stocks that are high growth ones and pay less dividends, because to me, I'd rather the growth. You make more money out of the growth than you do out of dividend mm. every single day. Yeah. And it's like, I know comp I know people held Telstra for 10 years because it paid a 6% dividend yield, while every year it went down 20 something percent. Mm -hmm. So that's really smart investing, isn't it? Not. <laughs> so <laughs> you're coming backwards 14% on year on year plus. Mm. So to me, it's about looking at where dividends are today and as we just discussed they're probably peaked they're probably starting to come down the other side so don't chase the dividend is what we're saying but let's look we're going to look at some companies that have got good prospects for growth but still pay a reasonable dividend don't they yeah well we actually started this sort of i guess you'd say ask about can i say that you can say that <laughs> so instead but if we of get banned from youtube it's your <laughs> fault <laughs> i bottom about then how's that okay all right, so we looked at the list. Instead of saying, okay, go through the watch list and look, at for, sto look for stocks mm. that actually look like they're booming, we actually went to the dividend list and thought, let's find the highest paying dividend stocks and really mm. test that theory and see whether you can still find good opportunities there mm. to get a total return because that's the idea, isn't it? Well, it is. Now, team, we have a list of stocks with the highest dividend yields, which as I mentioned. So now I want to really challenge you to see if we can find stocks that have both high dividends and good growth. But... Can I also ask you to talk about the risk people often take in order to get a dividend? Yeah, so do you want to do that point. first or look at the stocks? The risk part's a really good point. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you can have situations where stocks are coming into a cycle, they'll go ex-dividend. People think, oh, great, there's this big dividend. The classic case of that was some of the mining stocks mm -hmm. in 2011, right when the mining cycle peaked and people were unaware of that yeah. and stocks went ex-dividend. They thought, yep, we'll rub our hands together and take those dividends and the stocks just continued down for a long time. So mm -hmm. it's about the timing as well. Mm. I mean, to, to me also, it, it, most times when a dividend's paid, the stock's going to fall. Yeah. And if you measure that versus how much you've got in the stock and how much you, you've lost on the growth in that day, a lot of the times you're losing more than what you're getting paid in the dividend. So yeah. you really need to understand what you're doing and how long you're going to be holding the stock for. Because if it's a longer term play and you're going to be holding it for a while, you've got to allow enough time for the stock to then recover and bring, give you back the growth that you've lost. Well, yeah, if the, if the dividend paid is 3%, Mm. half of a 6% yearly dividend yield, your, your stock's going to drop 3% yep. plus. So it might be dropping 4.5%. So then to make that 4.5% up, you've been paid that into your bank account. But then to make that up on the growth, that's got to make about 5% growth or something or 6% mm, yeah. growth just to get back to being even, even at the level that it was. Mm. So that's what you're talking exactly. about here. Yep. So if it drops more than about 1.5 times the dividend yield, that means the stock's a bit sick though, doesn't mm. it? That yeah, and I guess selling. that's interesting too, because if you're looking at the degree of the dividend, so say mm -hmm. it's the market average or higher, whatever that percentage is, the stock's going to drop that amount. And if it's a fully frank dividend, it's going to drop more again. So, yep. and it's about going back and looking. This is why the chart's so important, because you can go back and actually have a look yep. at the history to see how far it actually drops.
Okay, mm. so we're going to look at some stocks now. We sure so you've are. Got, so yep. I know you're gonna, you've got a watch list, haven't you? Of a whole we lot definitely of do. We do. Secret watch list. So how about we get into that? We've added a few extras as well, just you in case. Are. Janine <laughs> added a few extras, not <laughs> Phil, right? Yeah, actually, I'm covering. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we made a pact today. We're going to be friends and look after oh, each other. Oh, you're going to be friends. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, so look, yeah, on your chart, we've got Woodside Energy Group, which is the first one. And I mean, this stock's been on our radar for, for a while. Many reports, uh, many shows, it's... It's either been people rung in about it or we're, we're talking about it. And um, it's a stock that pays a good dividend. It is positioned, again, uh, at that $30 mark, which if we bring up the monthly chart, you'll see that that $30 mark has been a level that's been very, very important for this stock. I'll just Yeah, I think we've talked about this one on the show recently quite a few a times. Lot, yeah. So we've got an expectation for growth of this share hmm. in the short and medium term. And it's also, if we, if we suggest that, I think on a previous show we talked about, look, in the short term, there could be in the order of around 10 to 15%, mm. but more medium term, if it gets through that high, well, then clearly it's sort of more in that sort of degree. But um, if we go back to the watch list and we have a look at Woodside and we see that Woodside's actually got a yield of around 16.4 at the moment, um, then that's quite incredible, isn't it? Beautiful. To have big mm. dividends like that. But it could mean that the share price falls, but it could also mean that given that dividends high like that, and there's this whole theory about cutting dividends, that at some point the dividend in the not too distant future may be cut, especially Woodside's mm -hmm. going into a lot of things. They're getting into big projects. They're going into Japan as well and, make, and have good relationships with the Japanese companies. So there could be a lot in the wings here that's coming up that they're going to need that capital for and then may rein in the dividend. And even if they do cut it, let's say they cut it by half, 8% mm. is still a good dividend, particularly when the focus is going to turn to growth mm. and you're going to get that growth potential as well. So 8% is still a, a like fantastic. awesome dividend. It's like more, than, yeah. more than interest. Bank it's interest double so. what the average is. Mm, it's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? So look, that's a good one to, to look at. Now, Whitehaven Coal is another one that we uh, looked at. At the moment, it's been pulling back. Um, Phil, and we were looking at this $8 level today, weren't we, across yeah. here? Because we can see that there's some nice support there and resistance um, all the way across there. And if it manages to get back through that $8 level, then we could see it move up to challenge that high. Anything below this level here, I would not buy just to, in hope of getting the big dividend as we're all on about. But if you look at that um, low there, I think it's around $6. I'd mm. be really watching that because if it takes off through that, you know, just leave it, leave it unfold. Yeah, that's crucial that, that you mentioned the $6. Mm. I'll, I'll mark it up. And um, the reason why I really like it, the fact that it's, come to this previous uh, level here and it's bounced off it to the to the other side and if it can hold like you said above six dollars then sure get the dividend and and um keep this one on but any breaks below six dollars it, it could be a bit of a worry yeah and if we go back to the watch list quickly and we just have a look at that one so the code is whc whitehaven coal and we come down the list we can see there the dividend is 11.6 approximately so still another um, decent dividend in there with Whitehaven coal mm. but mm. I mean obviously it's coal mm. you know which is you know it's one of those things it's like let's not talk about the war mm. yeah. let's not talk about coal because it's you know it's one of those resources that we've got plenty of that we're not allowed to do anything with and so why would that be going up now or we're looking at going up? Well, I guess that there's, um, you know, not everybody's going to dump coal instantly with mm. the move to um, net zero. Well, the world can't dump coal at it's the moment. It's not possible. I know mm. Asia wants our coal and I only heard yesterday that Ukraine's crying out for our coal. And Buffett's, help, Buffett's you know? going back into fossil fuels, so... Buffett's going back into fossil fuels. Uh, uh, the mm. oil, sorry. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if, if he's... If not he's moving think, away from it, If he's it, not yeah. moving away from it, then... What does that tell maybe, you? Maybe, maybe mm. it's not finished. Well, I don't think it is either. I think we can't, we can't, re our reliance on coal for what we need it for electricity and everything else is still going to be around for a long, long oh, yeah. time. And I think, you know, we've talked a lot about renewables here on the show and saying, well, you know, how Australia's got, it's, it's basically, it's zero emissions target is not possible uh, for renewables. So we've got to do something. But, and obviously the world still needs coal, but it's interesting that we are talking about this and we're talking about this is a stock that's an opportunity, mm. which is great, yeah. you know, and it's paying a good dividend yield. So, so you're expecting the dividend yield to come down a little bit? Potentially, yeah. potentially. I mean, in line with, with the article and, and going back to the averages, it, it could very well be, but for now it's, I mean... 
Yeah, we'll just be interested to see the, of the companies that do cut their dividend, how the market reacts. That's a whole different story. Yeah, because we're getting mm. used to big dividends, aren't we, the last mm. couple of years? It's like, oh, look at all these big dividends. And it's like yummy. And you go and look at your bank account and see thousands <laughs> of dollars coming in dividends. And you go, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I can go and get another coffee now. <laughs> um, but there are some big dividend checks coming through for people. You're not allowed to drink coffee at the moment. I know. <laughs> I could diet. afford it though if I got my dividend. <laughs> so, I know. I mean, I mean, I got a notice the other day from ComBank, you know, because it's one of my shares I got in my self funds, self managed yeah. super funds, and it's like, oh, we've paid this dividend. I go, okay, whatever, <laughs> you know. But I know a lot of people do live on their dividends. A lot of retirees oh, yeah, and definitely. others really it's rely really on them. Really important. And that's sort of what I'm talking about. Not yeah. me. I don't rely on my dividends. But if you're somebody who relies on them, we've got to actually probably get ready for them to be lower on average over the next few years, mm. but then be happy that we're going to get higher growth out of a lot of our shares. That's so exactly that's a better it. play on that side, to, in my mind, mm -hmm. from that point of view. So what's our next stock? So next we've got Grain Corp. Yeah. Grain Corp's an interesting one. That's an it? interesting one. Yeah. Mm. And look, why did you like that one? Now, look, this one, I mean, it, it's, it's held up. It, it's held up nicely. It's had this huge run from March 2020 all throughout that COVID period. It, it stayed strong up to April 2022. And the pullback that it's had from April 22 into March has been what I, I would like to see with a nice typical pullback, healthy pullback. It's fallen about less than half of what it's gone up. And now it's consolidating around the $7 mark, starting to poke its head above $8.20. I, I like when stocks do this, that you know they run through that whole cycle of expansion, contraction, consolidation. Yeah. And um, if it can you know, show some signs above $8 or $8.50 uh, with, with some nice closes, then this one definitely, uh, I, I don't see why it can't resume the uptrend and start tackling those all time highs. Mm. Mm. Look, I, I, I don't have anything to say about it other than um, a horizontal line across here is going to be a simple thing that's telling me where it's got to get through. So it's really, think the great thing about technical analysis is it just sets a line in the sand and saying, don't buy until it gets above this point, basically, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And, and the other point on this one is it, it, it'll be quite okay if it continues to go sideways if you're going to be, keep collecting that dividend. Well, that's a good point too. Yeah. What's, the yeah. risk of, what's the risk of the fall? That's the question. And yeah. it's not far it's away. It's still better money than sitting in the bank. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, if you, if you sell the stock, what do you do? You put your money somewhere else and in the bank you're getting a few percent. Mm. Now, I mean, obviously CPI is starting to come down. It's probably going to come down into the RBA's range in the next four to six months or within that. Then we're going to get interest rates dropping. So... Still, even with, in, with, the, with dividend yields dropping, you're still going to be better off in a, in a stock, aren't you, really? Oh, yeah. You would. I'd just be watching it, though. Like, if it does slip down lower and takes out this low mm. a couple of weeks ago, uh, what's that? Um, what's well, only two weeks ago? Yeah, that, mm. it, then it would be going south. That's all I would say about that one. But if we go back and look at Grain Corp, and we have a look at it's the... About five and a half. Um, is it five and a half? Can you see it on there? Yeah, Down that's the still bottom? pretty good. Five and a half percent. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad, is it? So, but obviously you want the share price going in, in its direction. But what do we... Th so if we look at the upside for that, just mm. in percentage terms, say you're getting a dividend of five and a half. And then on top of that, if it is a fully frank dividend, and I haven't checked that one, but if it was a fully frank dividend, you got a little bit extra there depending on your tax bracket, plus... Um, around 25% to that high if it does start moving up strongly. So That's pretty good too, isn't interesting, it? doesn't it? Nothing to be sneezed at. Mm. What's the next one? All right, next one, um, MGF. Now, Phil, it's taken off like a rocket, this yes, one. Yes, so I, I mm. kept this one on the list. We were arming and arming whether we should keep this on the list. And um, <laughs> oh, This is a Phil pick. <laughs> yeah, it's a Phil pick. And, and if you look at the chart, obviously, you'll see on the monthly chart, this has just rocketed up. Um, and uh, look, it's very rare that you can find a scenario that you know does pay a, a really really nice dividend and shoot through and give you this kind of growth so just for that fact alone i mean I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and try and challenge this uptrend if you're going to get good income out of this and it's moving this way then why not get involved enjoy the sunshine while enjoy. It's gone. Yeah. Now, now the reason i didn't pick this one is simply because looking at that it looks like a similar sort of trajectory to the japanese market and i'm thinking you know buffett was saying go japan i haven't checked M mgf to see what they're into but my first thought was, have they gone into Japan in a big way, which is that it's near its all-time highs. But you could be right. It could just keep rocketing higher because that's what it's done for, for quite a while now. Well, mm -hmm. it's a global fund, isn't it? It's global. This is global. Yeah. So it'd be mm. everywhere. So it'd be everywhere. So, so they, they can they just keep moving. Yeah, so they, it's unlikely markets. to have huge, huge exposure just in Japan and not mm. other places. But obviously it's taking off because 
the world has been so held back the last mm. four or five years with COVID and everything else. You know, Japan's just gone into recession, but you know, maybe there people are expecting everything to go boom for a while. You know, you never know because I mean, obviously, this is an election year in the US. Exactly. So it's going to be a positive year on the stock markets. Next year is likely to be positive as well. So, hey, I like it. Mm. Well, that's I a like great it. point that you just raised, that it is mm. election year coming. And, and generally mm. we know from doing the research that election years, it's, it's positive and also the year after. So mm. the, the income play could be quite good in, for the next two years. Yeah, absolutely. Next, next one. All right, we've got Yarn Coal. Um, so a couple of coal stocks have come up Another on that list. Another coal stock. Yeah. And <laughs> look, there's risen up quite strongly. It's hit that $6 mark. But look at the potential upside we're talking here. If this takes off, we, you know, it could actually double in price. So um, you wouldn't be worried about the dividends then, would you? A, a number of rules have triggered, but I'd still be waiting for it to go back above this level just to see if it can do that. Let's have a look at the sort of percentage that's to that high up here. So it's around about 15 to maybe t almost 20% to that high if it gets through that level. Um, but as I said, I'd be waiting just to let it go through that $6 mark strongly and see if it's got enough momentum to go through the high and just setting a nice tight stop loss underneath that low there. So let's have a look at the um, dividend. So 27%. Uh, can you show me where it is? It's the top one, the best 27. dividend. 27. So this is the best one of the lot. So that would make you a little bit concerned, wouldn't it? Having a dividend yield of that sort of high up. You and just I'm said you, 27%. 27%. Yeah, yeah. So, and I haven't checked the details of that, but there may be a special dividend in there. If anyone's mm. watching the show and you've actually, you're actually text familiar us. with this one, yeah, text us and let us know what Google the situation it. with the dividend <laughs> is. <laughs> I, I, I'm, know, stu yeah. I'm stunned because when I look at stocks like this, I'm, I'm looking at, at that uh, mm -hmm. as a uh, growth stock. You know, you look at the chart and you just see the volatility. It looks like a growth stock to me. And then all of a sudden they're paying 27% dividend yield on top. That's yeah. amazing. I'd be interested well, to see yeah. what everybody votes. So everybody out there watching, if you actually vote for the stock that you prefer, yeah. um, that would be awesome. And I'd love to see what your thoughts are on it. But normally, like, if you see 27% dividend, that means the stock's fallen out of bed. Mm. Mm. Really, that's what it generally says to me. Don't but go that's holding up. I mean, but it, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, like strange. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's had its all-time low back in March 2015. Mm -hmm. And since then, it hasn't made a lower low than that. It's, it's really just consolidated and slowly starting to break up. Like, if you were looking at this, like I said, from a growth perspective, you're looking at this thinking, well, this is looking good, basing out. Mm. Where do you get 27%? Like, where do you get it? They well, see, sometimes companies can have, have some special, good cash reserves. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> special dividends that, yeah. um, that they're paying out. So, you know, but that can also be artificially holding up the share price as well because yes. the, the big funds are because trying to the get in there to get, get the get, dividends. Get the, get the money yeah, out of it. Yeah, so they schmooze the big funds. Mm. Okay, so we've got another one? All right, let's have a look. Um, now we've got Zim, so that Zim Platz Holdings. Now, um, this one was pulling back, Phil, and when, when we, it was funny, when we're going through the list, <laughs> I'm going, yep, no, nope, yep, and Phil's saying, oh, I don't mind this one, so... Um, I'm going to let you take this one away. I love that. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I, I, Phil's taken over my role of being the opposite to you. Okay, no, I like that. No, no, no. I like that. No, no. I'm not sure whether I'd like this one now that I look at it again. <laughs> All right, do you want me to but, um, no, no, find look, something for you? No, it's okay. No? Um, look, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on the monthly chart. If we bring up the monthly chart here, it's um, what I don't mind about it, to be honest, more than anything. Do it's you want to enlarge that? Uh, yeah, so sure. they can see, it's just yep. that there's a bit of liquid at the start. Yeah, and it is quite a liquid. Uh, you can see that the, the bars, the range of them, it is quite gappy. But what I like is it's, it's had that real nice, um, from a bigger term perspective, consolidation where it's come and tested the all-time low and then started to trend out. And, and um, again, it's one of those stories where the pullback is less than half of the, the previous uh, range from Jan 2016. So still quite healthy to me. There is some support around that September 2021 low. I like the fact that if you if I zoom in a little closer, you'll see that the majority of the heavy buying or the strong buying came around Feb 21 and March 2021, which it's it's only now coming back into that. But again, like you've said, in the most recent price action, this is creating uh, lower highs and lower lows and closing lower. Eventually, you'll be, eventually it'll be all right. And, and it, is, it, is, it is extending a little bit <laughs> on the downgrade. You're not going to get into it without a trend line, are you? No, no, you yeah. definitely need rules around this one and, and you want to be a bit patient. But um, yep. look, I've said that I like it, so I've got to make up reasons. But it looks like it's, it looks like, is it exhausting its downward move at the moment? Not necessarily. Or close to it? Mm, it t to me, it looks like it's expanding on the down move and it's closing below yep. previous lows. So I don't think it's finished. 
but there is that support uh, around um, 1940. So there is a level that it's uh, at targeted now, along with the uh, coming into a level where the strong buying was. So there is there are reasons for this to potentially turn around, but I would like to see it start. Turning around. turning around. What about the angle yeah. of the trend going up? Like just sort of here, you might find that it's just going to come down just a bit below mm. twenty dollars, and then off it goes again. Mm. Could do. Yeah, mm. yeah. Just just something. Uh, basically, what we're saying is we want to see this stock start to show some signs of it reversing before yep. you got excited. Okay. Yeah. So do we want to just have a look at the dividend for that, or? Um, well, you can if you like. Just yeah. quickly. Yeah, um, just so quickly have a look at it. We've got seven point four five percent. So. Uh, eventually, okay. when it finds a bottom, then we'd be able to put a projection mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Phil get out of this by saying it looked really good this morning before the data. That's what I was got going to tell him. Yeah, so I was so just holding it right to the end and you took my thunder. Look a bit Thank worse. you. <laughs> <laughs> from that anyway, well, that is it for our topic for tonight. Now, stay with us as we've still got plenty of emails and stocks to go through. But before we get into these, for those watching on YouTube, you can watch all of tonight's show plus the exclusive content on Talking Wealth. Dot com. So head over and grab your free seven day, seven day trial. Another benefit is that every Monday I produce my weekly Australian stock market report where I share my views on the market and some great buying opportunities. Just yesterday I shared at least five to ten stocks that I know if you purchase just one of them will definitely pay for a whole year's subscription for TalkingWealth.com. Now on top of that you get hundreds of amazing interviews with industry experts from around the globe. Now this is all on talkingwealth.com. Moving on, when we get, well, we'll get into some more questions. So now it's your time to text the number on your screen. Now whilst we wait for your text, let's get into our next email. Our next question is from Ramesh. Hey again, I was wondering what you think of Dexas. It seems to have broken through a long-term downtrend. Kind regards, Ramesh. What do you reckon? Ramesh. Rem oh, ladies first. Of course. <laughs> okay, see okay. how polite you he is. you can go, Janine, that's Today. fine. Um, all right, so Ramesh, uh, really good stock choice. A nice REIT to have on your watch list is great. They pay good dividends as well. I like this one, however, I liked it more over a week ago. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Well, look, um, I haven't actually read a, read up on this one. However, it did get it was sold off, so you can see strongly on the chart there. This close here, seven thirty eight, is closed right down on the bar. I haven't written it off completely though, so I would actually just keep watching this one to see if it finds support somewhere around, you know, seven to seven twenty over coming weeks. And then once it actually ch eventually trades back up, you just want to sort of draw the line in the sand and decide, well, you know, where's a good buying point for it and really check your rules on that. But I think eventually there will be some opportunities in this one. Because Ramesh is saying it's crossed above it. And uh, he's right, yeah. Uh, he, yep. He's right, yep. is he? Yeah, I've marked it on the weekly chart. He's definitely, okay. It's definitely broken through a long-term downtrend line. Okay. And um, he's definitely right. The momentum, it's the first inclination that the momentum is changing. Uh, I really like the fact that if I, as you can see my mouse pointer here, mm -hmm. over the volume, you'll see the volume has remained quite steady on the up move, but since it's starting to um, fall away, the volume's really gone half. So volume's come out of the market here on this down move. So to me, I wouldn't be too quick, like Janine said, to be dismissing this. I don't even mind if it comes back and just tests these lows and takes them out a little, okay. as long as it can hold above the 720 level um, and, and show more signs that it wants to go up and break these highs about $8, then uh, it looks good. Okay, so you're just saying sit on your hands for a little bit? Is uh, just, that what you're saying? Just a little longer. See, see some, yeah. some short-term upside yep. and like it wants to get through eight bucks and then I think you've got something. Okay, that's perfect for Ramesh. Anyway, now we do have another text. This one is from Jacob. He's, Jacob, he's asking about TLX. Um, he says, hi team, I'm thinking of trading TLX. Price has retraced 50% of the major range and risen to retrace again about 50% from the low in October. I see an entry currently. I'm interested to know your thoughts, although after watching the show, you have got me excited about Kogan. Regards, Jacob. So I'm glad you got him excited about Kogan. Oh, good. So, so, that was a last minute yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, well, he's obviously a student because mm. obviously some of the stuff he was talking about yep. on the thing, but um, what do you reckon? Yeah, 100%. The 50% retracements that he's talking about. I mean, if we focus here on the weekly chart, uh, mm. monthly chart, sorry. Um, of, of the most recent range since Feb 2023, definitely spot on with that. Um, I'll go to the weekly chart and see if we can bring up some shorter term ranges. I just ranges. like the angle of the trend. Just have a mm. look at that. You just put a line up underneath that, Phil. 
What yeah. shorter term ranges were you referring well, to? Just I, I just wanted to confirm that his his uh, analysis in terms of the fifty percent is spot on, and you know this re most recent range, Jan twenty twenty four, that looks like a fifty percent retracement as well. Mm. So his analysis is great, which is fantastic, and um, you know the stock pulling back half of, of, of what it's going up is, is another great sign. This week has been quite strong. Um, you know it's Tuesday, but. Um, really, really strong breaking previous week's highs and, and ranging, uh, expanding quite nicely. So I have no issues with it at all. I'm gonna ask you a question because obviously, you know, he's trying to trade this stock and he's one of our students, Jacob's obviously one of our students. Mm -hmm. How important is what he's talking about? Because, and, and I'll, I'll follow it in context, everybody that watches this show is interested in making more money on the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the people watching are students and graduates and some of them aren't. But everybody wants to make more money in the stock market and we go, it's easy if you understand the right techniques mm. and strategies. Now he's using some techniques we've taught him in our course. Mm. So how many times have you seen a stock do what he's talking about and take off like a rocket a and lot. make mm. easy money? A lot. Yeah. Exactly. A lot. Yeah, that, fit, that uh, rule he's talking about. And, and I think when the students actually start learning that one, it just blows them away, the repetition of it. Oh, it is. It's just mm. so powerful. And it's like, it's like people go to me, I, I know when I first started teaching people this and they're going oh yeah yeah whatever yeah they, it'll they, just yeah whatever you can't tell me it does that it, yeah. and then it does this mm. and it goes up 100 percent of that if it does that i go yeah it does and they go oh yeah no it doesn't but then when they start analyzing and watching the stocks and applying it they realize how regular it is now i know you and you and i through that period of 2003 to 2007 that big bull run Mm. How many times did we trade using that rule and make shed loads of money for oh, our clients? Look, it's a great it's rule to have in combination, isn't it? Time Lots. after time mm. after time after time. And that's what I'm saying is the power of this stuff is huge if you know what you're doing. And, and it's in, without even knowing, it's embedded in us subconsciously. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talk about 50%. We talk about 50% sales when we go to the shop. We talk about stock markets when they have their big crashes. It's 50%. And that 50% number, unknowingly, subconsciously, mm. it is embedded in us. So there's there's um, ex exact reasons why the stock does turn at these 50% yeah. levels. So mm. very, very powerful if you can get yeah. your head around so it. So if you don't know what we're talking about, you need to do our course. Now, our next question is from Gerard, who says, Hi, Janine, Phil and Dale. I would like to have your thoughts on all tech batteries. There have been many predictions of the future and the part to be played by grid battery storage for the renewable energy sector. However, Alltech Batteries, um, which has a code of ATC, is already there. Um, is it the right time to buy some shares of ATC right now? Um, what do you forecast? Kind regards, Gerard. Gerard's the guy that last week he had five of his friends yes. um, on Talking Well. So thanks, Gerard, again. Big shout out to you. He's probably sitting there with a smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you reckon, ATC? Yeah, look, it's a um, it's a specy. Um, the stock's you know trading at eight eight cents, so it is a stock that is quite volatile, as you can see on the monthly chart. Yeah. Not for the the inexperienced. The first thing I would say to Gerard is make sure that you've got you've crossed all your uh, your X's and O's, and, and that there is enough liquidity here. Well, would you trade this stock? If there's enough liquidity in there, sure. Yeah, yeah. I have no issues trading this stock. Can we go to the weekly stock. chart and just um, have a bit of a look for him? Uh, yeah, we can so do that. So just hop on the yep, different time frame. So it, do, it does gap a little bit on the weekly chart, but if the, the more important thing is if he can um, get in and out with the position size he wants, then I have no issue in trading this stock. And if we get back to the monthly chart here, I like where it's positioned. It's, it's coming out of the all-time low. You can see that it's finding a base here at that four cents level on market in, in black here. Um, it's had almost three touches around this four or five cent level. So. It is quite a significant level. This month has been quite strong in, in being a, a reversal to the upside, taking out the last four or five months of price action. Yep. But that being said, it, it's been in a downtrend since April 2023. So given it is quite volatile and it is a bit specky, I, I personally would want to see it break through the April 23 high and, and slope a bit more of that, you know, that uh, left to right uh, gradient slope to show us that uh, it's not just the pullback to the downtrend. Mm. Now, I'm just, just touching on what he talked a bit about, you know, it's battery storage, all that sort of stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean because that's the future, it doesn't mean... It doesn't translate it to doesn't the, necessarily to the translate. share price. Lithium. That's yeah. right. So Lithium is a prime example. Yeah. You know? It's been going down for the last couple of years and yet we've got more and more batteries. So how does that actually work? Well, yeah. actually, mm. I'm, I've got a different view to Phil, first of all. Mm. I would say no. 
um, to Gerard. So okay. can I say no to you, Gerard? Oh, that sounds Is that like okay? a mother going, no, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Simply no. no. Um, find a better stock would be my first point. I do like what Phil's saying, yeah. though, in terms of waiting for it to get high above that level. But to a lot of mm. people, they might think, well, that's way too far from the current yeah. price, I'm, so they I'm, might not even wait. But I'm with you, because mm. I don't think, uh, from what I know, Gerard's not one of our students, and if he doesn't mm. have a good degree of skill, don't then I'd it. say, no, I'd go to another stock mm. um, from you. But if you're a highly educated and skillful trader, then I don't have a problem with the stock. Now we've got another text, guys. This one is from Dwayne. Um, he's asking about WiseTech or WTC. He says, hi, everyone. I was curious to your thoughts on WiseTech as a growth stock. Thanks, Dwayne. So what do you reckon, WiseTech? It's uh, in blue skies. Um, mm. For me, potentially, he might have missed the most recent opportunity to get into this stock. It's really had a, a February to die for. It's had one of its best months ever. So you um, think he's got FOMO? I think he might have a little bit of FOMO in terms of it being a long-term growth stock. Potentially, it's done all the right things. It's just been trending up yeah. for the best part of you know four years now. Um, but that being said, the way it's really shot out, how volatile, I think the better opportunity may have been somewhere around November or, or December, potentially even uh, January, February. But Ah, it's a bit run a bit hard for me. Well, we're going to see a little bit more of that over the next four or five weeks with mm. stocks mm. moving up. And this is what we're expecting before the next pullback. And there are going to be a lot of people trying to jump in on stocks at the end. And we see this in statistics. Now, I know Phil's got some statistics that we're going to show some people for Talking Wealth in the next week, aren't we? Oh, yes. About some pretty interesting stuff about why, how. We always say that the amateurs buy near the top. Yes. This mm. is going to mm. lay the Prove whole it. argument Blow your mind. Blow their mind. And mm. we're going to talk about it on Talking Wealth next, probably next Monday. Yeah. Um, but it's also, it's, this is what we're expecting the market to be bullish for the next four or five weeks. But there'll mm. be a lot of people getting into the market just as about to turn mm. and go the other way. So we do need to be careful on that. But thanks for wise text. But we do have another text. This one is from Dion. And he's asking about Paladin. And he says, hi, team. What are your thoughts on Paladin? It traded through resistance and pulled back to find support. At the same level, thanks, Dion. So, Jelene, Paladin. Wow, all as I can say, and I know why he's giving me Paladin. Why? Because <laughs> it's lithium, <laughs> oh. uranium. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. um, I just said lithium as a joke, but I knew it was yeah. uranium. Okay, so she look, hates looking, uranium, looking at the monthly chart, I think it's going to fall. It's you going to it's fall going to in fall. the short term. Yep. Yes, because everybody's got in on this run. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine um nine months up um normally when a stock goes up for nine months or thereabouts it has a pullback and we're starting to see a bit of a reversal already coming in look i'd like to see it pull back below that one dollar mark ideally or come back just a little bit just to test support of this sideways move uh, not to say that it will but that's what i'm expecting phil yeah i'm, I'm totally with janine on this one okay. it um what stocks tend to do often also is you've seen this really nice um period of of consolidation and it's shot out so they do like to come back and test these levels which could be what the stock is doing exactly right now you're seeing it there is one level here more shorter term around the one dollar and there is the the bigger level around that 70 80 cent mark um the only thing i'll add is given it's pulling back i actually like it you should start watching it because mm -hmm. it could give you that opportunity unlike wise tech which hasn't done this um and the volume's falling on this most recent down move so if it can hold around the dollar there's definitely a, um, a time to start looking and, and perhaps getting in. Oh, look, I, look, I think you've hit the nail on the head there because I know you know uranium's not done for. I know there's a lot more talk about nuclear energy around the planet, oh, yeah. especially because the, the numbers are just not stacking up for renewables at the moment. So even I heard on the, you know, the TV this morning talking about Australia with a nuclear reactor. Mm. So, and it's like, well, I know you disagree with it all, but I think we're going to have to bite the bullet and get a nuclear reactor. Well, well it's so powerful it, as, a, as an energy source, it's, mm. you know, it, it works. No, mm. I, d I disagree. I think it's just, <laughs> we've got so many nutcases around the world. We've gone into an age where the people at the top are, you want to call them narcissists, psychopaths. Um, Tell us what you really think. And so that you're putting the, those people in control of this sort of technology. Ultimately, they do have control over it. And uh, human beings are just not dumb bombs. enough. We're I mean, it's about not enough. Plant. We're just not. We're, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Plant. They're going to look. I mean, we got forced. Australia got forced by America mm -hmm. to actually sell uranium to India. 
Yeah. Even though they didn't yeah. sign the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. All right. So we can put your soapbox away. Okay. We're going to do one of these topics we, at no, some stage. Yes, <laughs> anyway. All right. Remember to hit that like button and show your support for our channel by clicking subscribe. It really helps others find our channel. We'd love to help them just like we've been or hopefully been helping all of you. Now, if you're feeling even more supportive, you can comment below this video after the show. We'd love to hear your favorite part. Uh, that's it from us for our YouTube viewers. For Talking Well subscribers, stay tuned for the bonus content we promised. Next week in our main topic, we get into a great topic that is retiring early. And we share our five stocks to help you do just that. So make sure you join us next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, if you love this show, then show your support for the team that puts in an effort in each and every week to bring it to you. Give them a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll know when we put up more content. As always, thank you for joining us. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.